At Gala Chevrolet, our master technicians service every make and model no matter where you purchase your vehicle. But that's not all. We also provide certified service on every GM model. So if your car's been acting a little funny lately or something just doesn't seem right, don't wait. Bring it in to the most modern service facility in the entire state and let us make sure that you're driving a vehicle you and your family can depend on. Service done right the first time, every time, right here at the all-new Gala Chevrolet. The Barley Bowl, a proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years, is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. This is Coach Borrego of the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, hello to all you parents out there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, 38 years for the AYBL. You guys are doing a great job. You've shaped a lot of lives, young men and women, and you'll continue to do that. Parents get involved, sign your kid up. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, it helps shape who I am today. It helps shape uh, me as a basketball player, as a coach. So get out there, sign them up. Have a great season. Good luck to everybody. It's time to make your plans to be at New Mexico's premier annual sports event. The 13th annual New Mexico Bowl is Saturday, December 15th, high noon at Dreamstyle Stadium. I'm Jeff Simbiata, Executive Director of the New Mexico Bowl. Be with us as once again, college football's bowl season kicks off right here in Albuquerque. Bring your friends, bring your colleagues, host your holiday party at the New Mexico Bowl. It's annually one of the most exciting games of college football's postseason. Bottom line, it's a whole lot of fun. Visit NewMexicoBowl.com or call 925 5999, the New Mexico Bowl, where bowl season begins. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Red Menace TV here on ProView Networks. Leroy Lucero along with Michael Carlisle. Michael, how are you doing this fine morning? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, actually. Uh, Lobo football and basketball season are, are well in. Well, football's been well underway for a while, or it might be over, depending on how you look at it. And Lobo basketball just tipped off last night in a weird situation that the regular season starts, and then you have an exhibition game. So, so that's kind of weird. Um, I noticed Lobo fan after after last night's uh, game against uh, Cal State Northridge, right? CSUN. 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 What is it? Uh, what? Cal State University Northridge. Uh, that's what it is, CSUN. Uh, a lot of Lobo fans were, were whining and gnashing their teeth on Twitter saying that it was a horrible, horrible win. Where, where, where do you want to go? Do you want to go football or you want to go basketball? I'll give you that choice to start us off. All right, so was it a horrible, horrible win, Mr. Michael Carlisle? Uh, no, because it was a win. Yeah. I would rather win any game ugly than lose pretty. And look, it's the first game of the season. Mm -hmm. um, you were without Drew Drennan. Mm -hmm. It was on the road. The Lobos struggled in the early part of the season on the road a year ago. They didn't get their first road win until January 17th last year. That was at UNLV. Uh, you got the win. That's all that matters. Was it a, a textbook game? No. But you battled, you, you grinded it out, you got the win. Election night and uh, Anthony Mathis, the governor, nails one. Oh, yeah, you know, I get him confused. I think he, he was the big winner uh, last night uh, off the bank. Came up clutch there at the end, absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you know, being a wrestling fan, all I could think of was uh, Shane McMahon's "Here Comes the Money" when he hit that shot, because that was just uh, <laughs> that was a money shot right there uh, off the bank to hit it like that uh, with no time left on the clock. Um, looking at the game and watching it, by the way, they have they had really nice uh, video. Did you watch it online? Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought that was pretty pretty good. I mean, just the the whole aspect of it all. Granted, it's a very small uh, gym that they sure. play at. But uh, I was really impre impressed with Corey Manigault. Um, still looks, you know, uh, and, and here's the thing. I, I know a lot of Lobo fans were, were kind of like, oh, you know, it wasn't a... I saw a team that's very young playing their first real live action against a real live team on the road, 
They're hesitant, um, somewhat. They're a little bit indecisive. They're still working on the chemistry. You mentioned Drew Drennan's not there, so the point guard situations, uh, it was good. McGee, I thought, did okay, but I mean, he didn't do anything, sp or uh, yeah, McGee. Uh, he didn't do anything spectacular, but I, I thought there's enough there that you could see that, sure. that a little bit of coaching, as these guys start growing together as a team, more time together, they're going to be really good. I think they have the opportunity to be really good a as the season goes along. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be a, a growing process. Again, you won the game. Was it perfect? No. Were there things that need to be worked on? Yeah. You need to cut down on the turnovers? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you need to, to work on moving the ball a little better? Sure. But a win's a win. Yeah. And, and you take that all day long, especially in game one. Like you mentioned, you, you're, you know, you're finally done just practicing with each other and, and all that. You, you're playing a, another team. Uh, a team with a brand new head coach and a lot of new players themselves, and, and they came out and wanted to make a good impression as well. And I, I thought it was a fun game, and the locals come away with a victory. Uh, I really like their their big guys, uh, Ezzedine and, and uh, Pinchuk. Mm -hmm. I, I thought both of them show a little something, uh, though. You know, my always my complaint when it comes to big men is is go down low. I don't like to see big men hoisting the three. I know it happens. I know things happen. I know that's part of the game. I know he comes from Europe, European background, uh, as Adin does, but, and, and Pinchuk as well. But I just don't like big men hoisting the three. I like them to go down low and battle, and, and I love Pinchuk's little hook shot. Uh, maybe you didn't see it as much last night, but I thought the Cherry Silver game, you, you saw a, a lot of potential out of Ezzedine, certainly. Um, I, I think he has the potential to, to be really good. I loved what I saw out of the Hawkmallow watch. Yeah. Uh, last night, and, and you, you could see that in, in the Cherry Silver game as well. I, I think he's his development from last year to this year is going to be a crucial piece for this Lobo team as the season goes along. Anthony Mathis uh, hitting the big shot at the end. He scored 12 points, all 12 of those points off of three pointers. Um, you know, once you get uh, Drennan back and, and the point guard situation becomes a little more settled and. You know, he can focus more on, on the shooting aspect of it. You know, again, like you said, you saw a lot of potential yeah. uh, from this team. It's kind of like a know your role situation, sure. too. I mean, wh what is your role? Uh, and I don't, I don't know if they necessarily all know their roles at this point, because there was times where they were kind of behind the three-point arc. And like you said, it's like the passing was like, uh, OK, do I pass to him? Do I not pass to him? Mm -hmm. What do I do in this situation? And I think that will all get fixed, especially sure. once conference season rolls around. Absolutely. Now, let's switch gears. Let's go to the gridiron. Okay. Uh, Lobo football, of course, played uh, San Diego State. They did. Uh, the return of Rocky Long, who seems to have won these games forever now between San Diego State and New Mexico, whether he was a coach here or a coach at San Diego State. I believe... Um, it's been over a decade now. Yeah. Yeah, he's been on the winning side every time. Yeah. I mean, there, there hasn't been a time that he hasn't. And, of course, the final was 31-23. to 23. Um, Lobo's played... Defensively, I thought they played well until crunch time. We've been very critical of, of the Lobo defense uh, at times this year, deservedly so. I think you, you need to credit them the job they did on Saturday night. Three turnovers, which resulted in 16 points for the Lobos. Uh, without the defense playing as well as they did for the majority of that game, even with the lower score, UNM's probably not in that game because the offense continued to struggle. Gerhardt got the start at quarterback. 41 yards passing. The run game really never got going either, mm -hmm. but the defense kept you in that game on Saturday, and you almost pulled it off. Well, we have to say San Diego State is one of the better running run defensive teams in sure. the nation, if Absolutely. not if not the conference, but definitely the nation. Uh, the, I thought they played well. Um, <clears throat> watching that game and, and the offense as it struggled, and it did struggle, um, there was times I was thinking maybe they should get Jones in the game I'm not even going to attempt this first name because you'll end up correcting Sharon. me. It's not that hard. I know, Sha, I know but it's Ron. like it's like a mental thing. Say it with me, Sha. Sha. Ron. Ron. Sharon Sha, Ron. Jones. Boom. Okay, Sharon Jones. I there was times I thought that he should get into the game simply because you know the the talk has been for the past few weeks that that UNM's quarter. You know the fact that Sharon Jones. See, I got it. I, I'm a quick learner. The fact that Sharon, actually I'm not, it's taking me, what, almost say, the entire it's, it's, season? It's nine games in. Yeah. Sharon Jones, we haven't really seen his entire uh, being able to run the offense, like the, the option, uh, running the ball, because they've they really held him back. At least that's what Coach Davies said is, is all season long. 
because they only had the one sure. quarterback. Now that you had the two quarterbacks, um, I would have liked to see Sharon Jones get in there, and, and, and now he's going to, okay. but of course. Well, maybe. We'll see. Here's, here's why I think you didn't see it. One, all right, Gerhardt started, but he's still not 100%. Right. If you put Jones in to run the option, which, by the way, you haven't done in about six games. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he gets hurt. And now you're down to, to one, uh, one quarterback again With who, a who, who, who's not 100%. And I know they still have Trey Hall. They, they really want to redshirt him. Um, the other thing in a close game like that, why isn't Sharon Jones starting in the first place? We, we, we know he has big play capability, mm -hmm. but then there's the flip side of it, the, the being turnover prone, the 10 interceptions on the season. In a tight game like that, you make a change and you try to move the ball downfield and he throws an interception or two, you've shot yourself in the foot. So I think for better or for worse, um, it was going to be Gerhardt's game all night. And again, you still almost pulled it off. I, I think the defense got a little tired at the end. Rocky... Look, Rocky's stubborn, and, and I think that's why people, Rocky is people Rocky. love him, and, and sometimes he can be frustrating. Um, he was insistent on running the ball right. until they had to throw the ball. Right. And when they had to throw the ball, they moved down the field in five plays. In, in, <laughs> they in about moved a, it at will. In about two minutes. Yeah. And, and scored. So, I mean, we, we also have to remember that they brought back their starting running back and quarterback, and quarterback who sure. had been injured. I think they also had an offensive lineman that was down mm -hmm. as well. So as soon as they brought them in in the second half, they were able to move the ball a little bit better than they were in the first half. Yeah. I, I think the Lobo defense got a little tired. I, I uh, think so. Again, you know, time, they, they of were possession, time of possession was not your friend if you were the Lobos. You know, hell, they only had the ball for like two minutes in the first half. Right. And I mean, they, when they, had, they ended up with like 140 yards. Is that, I can't even remember. It was, the it was uh, 142 yards. Yeah, 142 <laughs> yards. I mean, you're not really holding onto the ball that long. You're not really getting yeah. plays done that long. Why, why are you looking at my chest, dude? Oh, believe me. <laughs> that was not. You're freaking me out. Looking okay. at your chest. No, 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 no. I, I was like that. I'm like, did I have the Triple See, H torn pectoral no, but muscle it, bruise? It, it's your animal magnetism. Oh, okay. It, that's, it's, that's it, it freaks me out to, to look okay. you in the I, eyes. I, I, I was just you. trying to look I, down. I, I feel you. Okay. Um, no. And now I'm all thrown off of where we were at. You freaked me out. Anyway, no, the, the, the offense, and I think the defense just got worn out. I and, think so. And San Diego State came, you know, they knew they needed the win. And it, I, I think, like you said, as soon as they started throwing the ball, they imposed it. Well, what about the call? Um, I'm sure you, I know you took some calls uh, mm -hmm. the past couple of days on the air. Um, uh, Delane Hart Johnson seemed to make a catch that would have play across the would have yeah. pretty much salted the game away. I it would think, have given you a first point. down, and yeah, you'd have been in a really good spot. Uh, I was surprised they overturned it, not because it didn't hit the ground. I don't know, I, I, but I think it was a judgment call. But I don't think there was enough one way or the other to overturn it. So to me, whatever the call on the field was, should have stood. The call on the field was a catch. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. You ran up to the line. You should have just snapped the ball. All right, so you, you, you eat it down. If, if yeah, you, I mean, you, it you don't know the where. Time, but right, but it's second down instead of fourth down. Right, in the exactly. I you probably should have snapped the ball. Yeah, I, and you know, watching it on, on television and, and seeing the play, I mean, was it, there really wasn't enough evidence to overturn it one way right. or the other. Yeah, I, I unless they were watching that. another, unless yeah. they had another secret, super secret camera that I have no idea where they're watching it. I mean, you could see it moving, but his hands were underneath it, so the side of the ball. Now, here's the thing. I, I know Lobo fan, a lot of Lobo fans are complaining about that, but I think of the touchdown earlier that Delane Hart Johnson had where they threw it over the top and his knee seemed to land out of bounds with the foot inbounds. I mean, it, it, you know, calls are calls. They happen. Sure. I mean, I, you know, it can go one way or the other. I agree with you about why don't you just run the play. If, if nothing else... You get it counted. You still have second, third, and fourth down to either force San Diego State to burn their timeouts, or yeah. uh, if nothing else, you run some time off the clock and give yourself an opportunity to extend that game with the offense having it and not let Absolutely. San Diego State have it. And then, of course, at the end, uh, Gerhardt throws it up and, and it's intercepted, and that pretty much finishes the game for, mm -hmm. for the Lobos. Um, I have to admit, I did say on Twitter <laughs> when the Lobos were up by nine, I believe that I said, well, I, I thought the Lobos were, weren't going to win another game this year. And I said, it looks like I'll be eating crow. Uh, that, I believe that you were game. already congratulating the Lobos on a win. I really did. Yeah. I mean, I, I really did think they were, I thought they had the game in hand. Um, Dude, you yeah. literally are the poster child for a worst fan 
ever. Yeah, tell me why. Well, okay, well, I'll be more than happy to. Yeah, I'm sure First you of all, after years. Yes, years. Of holding court decades, in the North Decades, zone, decades. Decades upon decades. Yes. Of holding court in the North End Zone. Yes. You gave up. You waved your little white Bobo flag and you went home. I did. And then you tried to jump back on the bandwagon, tweeting out with nine minutes to go. Oh, what a great win for the Lobos. I, I guess thought was it was. Wrong. This is great. And you totally jinxed them and they lost. I, yeah, oh, I jinxed them now. Well, how else would you explain it? Uh, I flip-flopped. I flip-flopped. <laughs> you flip-flopped it and it jinxed the Lobos. Well. Good job, Leroy. <laughs> First of all, you, you weren't there to offer your support. And then you jinxed them online. I, I think, was it Monday that I sent you the tweet, the text? Uh, while well, you were doing the show that I'm, I'm giving the red wig to you because you were like the total Lobo apologist that game? I wasn't an apologist, but it, look, you, you got to call it like you see it. And if you're going to be critical when, when the defense doesn't play well, yeah. you, you've got to give them credit when they do play well. I did give them credit. I thought they were right. going to win. Then they didn't. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with Micah Frankel at CageMinds.com. And then we'll talk a little bit of playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah, playoffs. Right after this. If Adam shows up on time, he might forget he's, he's, he's starstruck with uh, yes, I did get the out of the tournament. Play action down the middle. It looked wide open as Chris Thomas. And that one I did see. I, 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 I didn't see the solo one. And right after the action that's coming over the middle, and it's hot. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched him do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? No, bad dog. Hi, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? Don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. Car Crafters, it's like it never happened. 
Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at GoldenPride at ABQ.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Brophy Sports Network. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico High School Sports and Athletics, and we here at Proview Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Dreamstyle Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as best custom home remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, Dreamstyle Remodeling is family owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A plus with the BBB. Dreamstyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000 square foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or dreamstyleremodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game with Garden Swartz Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 Shut Helmet. It's all at Garden Swartz Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swartz Team Sales. Welcome to the place where we talk about people getting punched in the face. This is Cage Minds. I am Micah Frankel. Big weekend in combat sports last weekend. Not to mention some surprising, I mean, earth-shattering kind of surprising news. Floyd Mayweather, well, it's not surprising this part, has unretired again. The surprising part is that he has set his sights on a fight in Japan at the Saitama Super Arena New Year's Eve for the Ryzen Fighting Federation, traditionally an MMA promotion. So could this be Floyd Mayweather's crossover foray into MMA? Not so fast because the rules have not been announced yet for his meeting with Tenshin Hasekawa, who is 20 years old, undefeated as a kickboxer and a mixed martial artist. 4-0 in the cage with a knockout. Well, two knockouts, a submission, and a decision. The impressive part, though, is this 27-0 and with 21 knockout record inside of the kickboxing realms. So, Tenson meets Mayweather, New Year's Eve, in Japan, in a ring, and it's going to be a fight. But we don't know what kind of fight yet. They've literally said it could be an exhibition, it could be kickboxing, it could be MMA. Maybe it could be kickboxing with no kicks so that Floyd's safe. Still wait to see what happens on that one, but just crazy big news. Like today's news that just broke about seven hours ago. One championship has announced lightweight and flyweight Grand Prix. That means we're going to have tournaments. Eddie Alvarez and Demetrius Johnson both going to be involved along with the best and biggest names that one championship has to offer. So that's huge news there in Asia. Now, talking about some actual action that happened in the cage last weekend, I told you guys Access TV was hosting CE, uh, CES MMA 53. Dennis Paiva at the last moment is has, has to force out of the fight 
We still had the main event title fight. Tony gravely gets stuck in an arm bar early, but slams his way out of it. Follow up punches, finishing off Cody Norby and becoming the new CES Bantamweight champion. Glory synthesized the song Pilong, devastating kicks, a tremendous performance, a unanimous decision, victory retained in the Glory Kickboxing lightweight title. And now a two-time Glory Women's Super Bantamweight Champion. It was a second round TKO as Anissa Meskin made devastating quick work of Jaddy Menzies putting an end to their rivalry. It's now three to one in favor of the Dutch fighter. And we also had UFC 230 from Madison Square Garden. Land of Inada and Matt Farvo engaged in what could be a fight of the year candidate fighting to a draw back and forth. Both guys getting knocked down in the first round. You also had Lyman Good with an uppercut just completely knocking out and turning out the lights of Ben Saunders, leading into a tremendous main card that saw Israel Adesanya make a statement about his arrival to the middleweight division in taking out Derek Brunson. Timing, knees up the middle, and about four knockdowns off of punches before the referee jumped in for the stoppage. Chris Weidman looked great against Jocker Ray Souza until Jocker Ray Souza just said F it and came forward looking to finish the fight. And that's what he did. It is massive, devastating power when you land a punch to someone's forehead, to the side of the forehead. No button here. Buttons are here, 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 but not here. And you knock somebody out. That's what Jocker Ray Souza did. And in the main event, Daniel Cormier with his Olympic wrestling pedigree grinded out the knockout artist, Derek Lewis. Took him to the ground, got his back in the second round, and finished the fight with a rear naked choke. We also, this past weekend, had the press conference for UFC 232, where officially you had John Jones and Alexander Gustafson stare down. You had a little shoving match. You had no title there at the stare down, but yet the UFC has affirmed that yes, the lightweight title is on the line when Jones meets Gustafson, but yet the lightweight title was also still around Cormier's neck after his win over Lewis, the title he's going to be stripped of and at 251 pounds, the title it doesn't look like he's going to cut weight to defend. So that was our action from last weekend. Coming up this weekend, you do have early Friday morning, one championship, 83, Heart of the Lion. Sage Northcutt and Eddie Alvarez will both be in attendance. Yes, you heard me right. Big names from America heading over to Asia to be there to see the unification of the Bantamweight title. Bill Bond, uh, Bibiano Fernandes taking on Kelvin Billong. Will Fernandes get this fight to the ground like he's been so proficient at doing? You also have Legacy Fighting Alliance Friday night here in America. Really close to us here in New Mexico. They're in Phoenix, Arizona at the Comerica Theater. Great card there, including the interim flyweight title on the line in the main event. Brandon Royval on short notice taking on Arizona's own Casey Kenny. We also are going to see on that card, you have Andrew Tennyson, AJ Robb, and Harvey Park. All of them have interviews up with on the YouTube channel Cage Minds MMA Show. Also Friday night, World Bare Knuckle Boxing Fighting Federation makes their debut event, Rise of the Titans. And some breaking news, it appears that Brendan Ward has pulled out of the main event with Johnny Hendricks. Also, earlier last week, the card lost Sean Merriman, the former San Diego Charger linebacker who was going to be jumping into the combat sports world for the first time. It looks like the Bare Knuckle Fighting Federation is having some financial issues. Keep your eye on that situation. We still expect the event to occur. Albuquerque's Isaac Valley flag is expected to be on the card. And also Mad Mike Alderetti, who I have an interview with, who's going to be taking on UFC vet Josh Neer. And then... Saturday night is the anniversary. We've been talking about it all year for the UFC. 25 years of UFC. The anniversary card in Denver, Colorado. UFC Fight Night 139 this weekend. 
tons of Albuquerque fighters on the card. On short notice, Joby Sanchez is jumping up to take on Mark De La Rosa. Normally both flyweights, that's a bantamweight contest because of the short time constraints for preparation. You also have Ray Borg. First time we're going to see Ray in quite a while. He's going to be taking on Las Cruces born Joseph Benavidez. The Civil War finally happens. Donald Cerrone, Mike Perry. There's been back and forth. There's been bad social media campaigns. There's been a lot of bickering, even on Joe Rogan's podcast. It's time they get in the cage and they throw down. It's all headlined by a featherweight fight between Yair Rodriguez, who's replacing an injured Frankie Edgar, taking on the Korean zombie Chun Jung Sung at elevation on short notice. It is a big mountain of climb for Yair Rodriguez against a guy like Chan Jung Sung, who is so well-rounded. And then for some local news, November 17th, Force of One Fighting Championships 5 hosting in Clovis. Here locally at the end of the month, leading into the beginning of the month, it's going to be crazy busy. November 30th, Fight Night 4 at his letter presented by Fresca's Productions. We had Steve Mean Machine Garcia as our guest here on Red Mess TV last week. You can also go check out my interview that's up currently with Marquis Smith talking about his beef and the lead up to facing Ricky Escabel. Right here on ProView Networks, December 1st, you can see from the Manual Lujan Complex, Expo Explosion 2, Legacy Boxing Presents, and the main event, we'll see Josh Pitbull Torres against Mohamed Rodriguez. Breaking news on a change in the co-main event, it had been announced earlier in the week that Arturo Crispin would be facing Joe Gomez. Instead, now Joe Gomez is going to be taking on Morris Rodriguez, who we saw at the first route to glory, lose to Josh Pitbull Torres. December 2nd, Sunday, you have King of the Cage at the Santa Ana Star Center, Starbound 2. If you go to the Facebook page, just yesterday I had the opportunity to talk with Charlie Williams, 18 months away from the cage. He's making his return, the Fit and HB fighter here locally fighting. And then... On December 8th, School of Hard Knocks Promotions is branching out from New Mexico, heading into Texas, presenting West Texas, New Mexico shootout. Des Hill versus Rico Urquiz right now headlining that boxing card. Keep going, keep going to CageMinds.com, and we'll keep you updated on all the details as, as we receive them, as these events unfold, and as changes to the card always continue to happen. And we'll be back with more Red Menace TV in just a moment. Enjoy some fights this weekend. Is this my car? State Farm knows that for every one of those what? moments... This is ridiculous! There's one of these. Is this my car? What? This is ridiculous. This can't be happening! This can't be happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Shut up! Shut up! Ah! That's why State Farm is there, with car insurance for when things go wrong, but also here with car loans to help life go right. State Farm. Talk to State Farm agent Marty Size or Michelle Rudolph in Albuquerque today. Chevrolet, our master technician service every make and model no matter where you purchase your vehicle. But that's not all. We also provide certified service on every GM model. So if your car has been acting a little funny lately or something just doesn't seem right, don't wait. Bring it into the most modern service facility in the entire state and let us make sure that you're driving a vehicle you and your family can depend on. Service done right the first time every time right here at the all new Gala Chevrolet. The Barley Bowl, proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years, is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. This is Coach Borrego of the Charlotte Hornets. 
Uh, hello to all you parents out there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, 38 years for the AYBL. You guys are doing a great job. You've shaped a lot of lives, young men and women, and you'll continue to do that. Parents get involved, sign your kid up. Uh, it's a great program. It helped shape who I am today. It helped shape uh, me as a basketball player, as a coach. So get out there, sign them up. Have a great season. Good luck to everybody. It's time to make your plans to be at New Mexico's premier annual sports event. The 13th annual New Mexico Bowl is Saturday, December 15th, high noon at Dreamstyle Stadium. I'm Jeff Simbiata, executive director of the New Mexico Bowl. Be with us as once again, college football's bowl season kicks off right here in Albuquerque. Bring your friends, bring your colleagues, host your holiday party at the New Mexico Bowl. It's annually one of the most exciting games of college football's postseason. Bottom line, it's a whole lot of fun. Visit NewMexicoBowl.com or call 925 5999, the New Mexico Bowl, where bowl season begins. Car Crafters, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched him do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that could happen? No, bad dog. Hi, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? Uh, don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. It's like it never happened. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenfried at abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Proby Sports Network. Dream Style Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as Best Custom Home Remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, Dream Style Remodeling is family-owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. DreamStyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000-square-foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or DreamStyleRemodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game with Garden Swords Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 Shut Helmet. It's all at Garden Swords Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swords Team Sales. Welcome back to Red Menace TV here on ProView Networks. We brought the man, Adam Deal, in here to talk because playoffs are starting in uh, New Mexico high school football. So, Adam, who's going to win it all in every thing like that just right off the bat yeah just boom. right off the bat boom. That, that, that's really gonna mess up the, the build up as we go through the brackets oh should we go through the who, brackets who's gonna win first. all right is that the way you want to do it that's probably the better way to do it all right let's start with this instead of going that route I realize this, you're intimidated being in the I know, uh, it's because Adam's here. I feel like I'm in between something here. Yeah, this, this, oh, no, this no. dude's like on TV every week <laughs> doing the, the play of the uh, game of the week. 
on uh, my 50, which there's been some pretty good games. Yeah. Finally, we've had a couple to end our season, right. which yeah, is Yeah, it's a little yeah. rough there for a little bit. And mm -hmm. then, of course, playoffs start this week, and all the metro area teams, for the most part, are out of town. Yeah, well, I mean, because, well, that being said, three of them have a bye, right? If we're talking right, six days. So, yeah. I mean, the top four seeds who get a bye, it's Cleveland's number one undefeated. And then um, you've got La Cueva there, the two seed. Um, they're undefeated, 10 and 0, District 2 champs. And then Centennial from down south of the District 3 champs, 10 and 0. And then Volcano Vista got the last buy. So those are your buys. And then the first round matchup, it goes the 8 9 matchup. Uh, playing host will be Monzano, your defending state there champs. You know. And guys, Monzano is mm -hmm. maybe hotter than any team in the state. You can see, if, yeah. there's, there we go. We got to put up, go. all the knows nice. what he's doing. Um, so yeah, you see my, that matchup, I, I love that matchup, Real Rancho versus Monzano in the first round. Now, everyone's picking Monzano. I, I, as a proud alum of, of, yes. of Real Rancho, have to think about this one. But Monzano's <laughs> not blowing anybody out. So they're kind of the, uh, they're kind of like, I, I, I want to say they're the kind of, they play what Dallas Cowboys want to play. They want to like, <laughs> they want to run the football uh -huh. and make three downs to get a first down and run the clock and, you know, do, you know, 15 play drives and score touchdowns. Hard hat that's, work. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the kind of team that they are. And so they're not going to blow you out. Um, but defensively, they're going to stop you and kind of keep the game slow. So uh, Manzano should be favorites, but Isaiah Chavez and Real Rancho Young and explosive at times can be dangerous, even though they just got blown out by Cleveland. Um, so I think it's a really good first-round matchup, that 8-9. I mean, I'm looking at those matchups, and, and uh, obviously, does Hobbs, I mean, does Eldorado survive? I mean, they've kind of, like, backed their way into the playoffs. Yeah, maybe the most intriguing matchup besides – Monzano, or it could even be more intriguing, is El Dorado at Hobbs, guys, because everyone knows how good Gabe Smith is. Now, mm -hmm. is he going to play? Is he not going to play? I tend to believe that, um, look, it's kind of like if you if you break your collarbone again, you break it again. Yeah. It's your senior year. Um, from what I understand, he doesn't have any next-level offers. And so I think Gabe Smith will play, and if he does, I think they win. And I think El Dorado then becomes a legitimate threat on that side of the bracket. I hmm. truly believe that um, because I think, and I've said this, and this could come back to bite me. I've said Centennial, I think, is um, fool's gold at 10-0. Their schedule, uh, to me, is not impressive, and they don't have big wins. But we'll find out. I could be wrong, and everyone down south probably hates me for saying that, but it is what it is, right? So um, I like El Dorado if Gabe Smith plays. I really do. Um, looking at the rest of, I mean, looking at, let's go deep. Uh, well, I should ask you this: Which games are going to be on on uh, on uh, ProView Networks? This well, week? we've got two games, and it's we, we got one game here locally. Is that Monzano Real Rancher game? You can see on the NFHS Network. NFHS Network uh, owns all the rights. Oh, that's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So so they'll be all streamed, and so we we stream them here on ProView Networks through the NFHS Network. So same crew production, it'll be good. Um, and then we'll do a 5A game, which is going to be Valley playing host to Santa Teresa in the 8-9 matchup, which will be fun. So I know Judge Chavez is excited to get back to the playoffs. It's been a while. Um, you got Las Cruces, the 7 seed and 10 seed. Clovis, that's a good matchup. All these first-round matchups, are, I think, are really good. Las Cruces is hotter, they say. I think it's a weaker district. Clovis doesn't play really well on the road, though, so probably still favorites Las Cruces. I tend to believe that Siebel is going to give Mayfield fits in that 12-5. That Mayfield, their seed is by, I think, the virtue of just having three districts and them officially finishing second in their district, and they, I think they got fortunate. I don't think they're as good as what their seed is, and I think Siebel is maybe a little bit more dangerous than people think. The only thing that is, is problematic for Siebel is just purely history, right? See, or Mayfield's good at the Field of Dreams. So I think it's a good matchup, though. I think at, at 6A, I mean, I think everyone's looking. We've talked about this matchup all season long. So it's going to be Cleveland and La Cueva, and let's see what happens. And we'll, and I heard some, some people say, well, listen, Cleveland's not the same team without Dorian Lewis. Ah, pump the brakes, man. They've got... Uh, Randy Nieto, fantastic. Colton Madison, mm -hmm. fantastic running the ball. Their wideouts are good. Their quarterback, sophomore Jeff He's Davison, is great. And they're just good. And they probably have the best coach in the state, Keith Ridenour, and his staff. So I still Dang, think you just ticked off every other coach. That's fine. It's, he's real. I'm, look, I, it, all the coaches that know who I appreciate. I mean, look, there's a ton of them. But I think Keith has proven through his young. A career that he's done unbelievable job him and his staff and so he's got to be if he's not the best he's up there okay so I'll, I'll say that um, but La Cueva look they've kind of skated by to be 10 and 0 and they have all these close games but they're still 10 and 0 and their their schedule is way more difficult than Centennials and so I think they have a good road to at least get to the semis and I like Volcano Vista to get I like I like three of the the, the buys to get to the next round I think if Centennial plays El Dorado with Gabe Smith 
I'm going to pick El Dorado. Oh, look so at this. I'm Ooh. just telling you. Hey, real quick in the 5A and and uh, just we'll look at some of these games, uh, mostly metro area. Belen Valencia. Uh, you, is that the game you said that you're broadcasting this? No. No, it'll be it'll be the 8-9, which is Valley and, and Valley, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz had their best season ever in school history, 8-2. and two. They finished behind Deming, though, in district play. I thought they might get that home game over Valley. I had predicted this bracket except the 8-9 flipped. Okay. Um, but I, I think it's a good matchup still for Valley. I think they should get to the next round, but they will struggle with Roswell. Guys, those top four seeds are really good, but in mm -hmm. particular, I think Roswell, I've seen them a couple of times. They can run the ball, they can throw it, and they've got stout defense. Your dark horse team in this bracket that I've been telling everybody is Piedra Vista. They're 7-3. and three. They've won their last five games. They look really good, and I think th the problem is, is that they have Artesia in front of them. Um, and don't let Artesia's four seed fool you. They're probably still your favorites overall. Um, they did beat Roswell, by the way, in district play. So, Do you have a winner for the uh, 5A? I'm just going to go with tradition because it's easy. 30 state championships. Michael Carlisle make it 31 for Artesia. Boom. Done. <laughs> 4A real quick. Any thoughts on that? Well, yeah, it's exciting to see St. Pius is the overall one seed, mm -hmm. right? And so at 7-3, and three, they got it because they beat Portales head-to-head, -head, maybe a state championship looming in front of those two. A lot of people owe St. Pius, so St. Pius could be looking at a home field advantage throughout. If you don't know the rule, by the semifinals, if, if you have past history in semifinals and up, it doesn't matter who the seed is, you go play at the other person's home. Mm -hmm. based on, Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, but that's yeah, how I it think, is. I hate that. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't think St. Pius should have a problem getting through this bracket to meet Portales, to be honest with you. So, awesome. um, and then 3A is cool because Hope Christian is the one seed, and obviously locally covering all these teams, it's been fun for Proby Networks. But let me tell you this, guys. This, this is the question that I've been bringing up. Let's pretend that a 3A Hope, 4A St. Pius, mm -hmm. and 6A, you know, either Cleveland or, or La Cueva or mm -hmm. somebody in the Metro get into. You have three teams locally here. Would the NMAA finally decide to have? A one-day event where all three of those games are played at one event. It'll, it's never happened before where three teams would host a state in championship venue, right. in one city. So would they finally do that and maybe test it out? Or where, I mean, where would you the want question. that? Where would you want that? A community? I think it's the at, easiest at, place to do it is community. It holds okay. thirteen thousand. I think that's the easiest place. U and M. Absolutely. Michael, I don't know. There's probably I don't know if there's a game th that weekend, but I mean <laughs> there would be more people for the high school. Well, games but, that, and then renting it out in the security sure, and stuff absolutely. probably is too much yeah, money. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know, but I would like to see community. It. it would be cool. Look, a cool. lot has to happen for that to happen, but it's favored to happen. So well, does, I mean, I, I think Hope Christian has just been on fire all season long. Yeah. I don't think I think yeah. they're just above everybody. Like else. there's a good possibility this happens, and if it does, then I would the NMAA do it? Would you want to see that? I would love to see that. Right? I think that would be huge. Oh. If if Cleveland and La Cueva did make it to the finals, it'd be at Cleveland. It's yeah. at Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland would host, which would, I don't they think be they would. To give I don't that think up? so. I don't think they would. Um, they would. They love their home. They have like a 94% winning percentage right. yeah. at home. So I don't think they would give that up. Um, now, yeah. if it were La Cueva and somebody else, Cleveland doesn't make it, right. and it's an APS game, it's three Albuquerque schools in the state championship game on the same day in the same city, how would you not make that a one-day event and Absolutely. put it all at Community oh, Stadium? You could have massive tailgates. I think it'd be great. It'd be great. You but, could have you know, a full carnival knows? lesson. I doubt it'll happen, but it's a good idea. A fool's dream. Anyways, that's it, right? Or do you want to talk two-way? Is there any two-way Metro teams? I don't I don't know anything. anything. Okay. Well, then I, I do. I you don't know anything. I thought you knew everything. Can, You're Adam Deal. I can tell you guys this. I'm, me and Josh Brown, we're going to Animus on uh, Saturday for the six-man state championship. <laughs> there you go. As Animus takes on Elida. So mm -hmm. there's that. Nice. Yeah. So this week also, uh, this weekend, I should say, we have soccer uh, tournament, correct? Yeah, so Friday is the Soccer State Championships. We will be streaming all of them for you. So is that NFHS Network? Is NFHS Network, okay. and it's girls uh, A through 3A, boys, and then 4A and 5A. So six games, and they're all going to be live in the NFHS Network for you. Nice. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. Okay, and what else? coming up cross we got cross country state championships if you're interested in it have you ever done that no 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 that's Tyler are you going to do that no 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 that's a little out of my wheelhouse guys uh Tyler Ortega does a great job by the way because he used to run cross country and so he does a good job for us all right so you do the soccer because you used to play soccer. I will do the soccer in fact I won't even be doing football playoffs on Friday night I'll do the the soccer championships which is I love it it's, it's a lot of fun. And we have basketball season staring us right in Man, the face. Man, hope season is here. Like, that's yep. that's what I'm waiting for. Look, I love football. Um, this year has been rough because of the blowouts. Yeah. Almost every game is a blowout. Now, I think it'll get more intriguing as we're in the playoffs and better teams are playing each other. 
but um, I'm ready for hoop season. Now, when does that? Uh, when does a, our a first city? game on ProView Networks will be on December fourth. So we got a couple um, weeks. And it's we got like a quadruple header for you. So you got to rest your voice. And yeah, everything. it's all basketball. Do you do the honey or or uh, what do you? No, you know I just. Uh, the worst is state basketball, right? So, like, mm -hmm. state basketball, when I first started doing it, radio, too, because radio, right. you have to talk more, and TV, right. you don't. Um, <laughs> man, first time, I think I was, like, a, a junior in college, and I did, I think, uh, eight games in one day, and the second day, I was hoarse already. So, you have to learn how to pace yourself. So, when the quarterfinals start at the pit, it's not like, hello, everybody, welcome, you're glad you could be here. It's like, hello, everybody, you got to pace yourself, you know, it's <laughs> quarterfinals, and... Let's relax. A I'm going to take you out of the high school scene just for a minute because I know that you and I have gone back and forth with this for a couple of years. Dallas Cowboys. Oof. Do we have to talk about this? <laughs> I, I wouldn't, but uh... just quick thoughts. I mean, they picked up Amari Cooper. He got a touchdown first game, and then uh, Dak Prescott and the offense pretty much. A couple things, I guess. Amari Cooper. Looked great in one game. I mm -hmm. thought he's getting out of his breaks great. I thought he looked great. Mm -hmm. um, if if he continues to do what he did on Monday, I think it's worth the first round pick. Because what is Dallas going to use that first round pick for sure. this next year? A wide receiver. So if Amari Cooper is young enough and he's worth it, if he continues to do that, um, it's worth the, the number yeah, one Yeah, I, I had no problem with the trade. Everyone's screaming for Jason Garrett's head, and yeah, I, I think that probably has to happen. Everyone's screaming for them to have a general manager. Look, you're a Cowboys fan. How long have you been a Cowboys fan for? My whole life. Okay, me too. And I mean, it's not as long as you, but is, is, uh, <laughs> but is, <laughs> but is anything gonna, is anything going to change? Is Jerry Jones going to get a general ma general manager? Nope. No. No. So no, shut no, up. No. It's not going to happen. That's your team. Jerry Jones is you're at, he's either going to get us there or he's not. I mean, sh there ain't going to be no general manager. No. It's not going to happen until he dies, and it's just not going to happen. And, then Steven and Steven Jones over. is going to be the same, okay? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. it's not happening. Right. So just stick with it. Now, Jason Garrett's going to be fired. It'll be at the end of the year because Jones has too much respect for Jason Garrett. Sure. So he's not going to do it midseason. So just stick it out, Cowboy fans. Get an rough. offense. Get a You'll different offense. You'll win two, maybe three more games. You're going to go six and ten and, you know, cheer for somebody else for the rest of the year because that's what's going to happen. All you can do is cheer against Michael Carlisle's Redskins. That's no, what you can do. Hop on the bandwagon, guys. Uh, you know what? I heard room. Michael on the show, on his show Monday. Yeah. He was like, oh, I feel sorry for the Cowboy fans. Here's and my thought. Bit. is I'm not going to hop on the bandwagon. I'll root for the Eagles over the Redskins. This is why. Because the Eagles just won, so I'm used to them already winning. I can put sure. up with it. If the Redskins and the Eagles win back-to-back, -back, like, that would just drive me nuts. So, I'll I'll root for the Redskins to just take go a dive. AFC. That's the easiest way to do oh, it. Oh, I will. I mean, Patriots. Yeah, so. see, that's a, just go with the player. I I've always Tom been a Brady. Tom Brady fan. Yeah, sure. right, exactly. It's easy to be a Tom <laughs> Brady fan. In fact, he did prove he's the GOAT, right? Oh, I think we knew that before. Yeah, we knew that before. Though. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. Adam, thanks for being part of today's show, thanks, talking yep, about Don't man. forget, you can catch him all the time here on ProView Networks and the NFHS Network. High school football, basketball, soccer. You don't do the cheerleading and the cross we do. country. Right? I, I do know cheer. The, I know we do as a network, but I'm talking about you personally. I do do cheerleading. You do? I mean, not well, but I do it. <laughs> really? What, what do you, I mean, what do you do? He shook the, she shook her pom-pom No, you kind of just like, and here come the El Dorado Eaglets. And then you let them. Oh, you do. Yeah. So yeah. you don't give yeah. an actual play-by-play? No. Play and then you you're like, great it? performance. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah. maybe we should go ahead and splurge now and get a telestrator. And you could say, see the way she twisted her pom-pom yeah. like that or adjusted the ribbon? That's not me. You know, Ed Nunez does a good job with it, though, because he gets a good color commentator. That's a, you got to get a good color commentator. Yeah. And, and I've heard Sebastian do it as well. Yeah. So, so anyway, Adam, thanks for being part of today's yeah. show. We'll be back with more Red Menace after this. Is this my car? State Farm knows that for every one of those what? moments, this is ridiculous. There's one of these. Is this my car? What? This is ridiculous. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Shut up. Shut up. Ah! That's why State Farm is there, with car insurance for when things go wrong, but also here with car loans to help life go right. State Farm. Talk to State Farm agent Marty Size or Michelle Rudolph in Albuquerque today.
Ocala Chevrolet, our master technicians service every make and model no matter where you purchase your vehicle. But that's not all. We also provide certified service on every GM model. So if your car's been acting a little funny lately or something just doesn't seem right, don't wait. Bring it into the most modern service facility in the entire state and let us make sure that you're driving a vehicle you and your family can depend on. Service done right the first time, every time, right here at the all-new Gala Chevrolet. The Barley Bowl, a proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years, is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. This is Coach Borrego of the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, hello to all you parents out there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, 38 years for the AYBL. You guys are doing a great job. You've shaped a lot of lives, young men and women, and you'll continue to do that. Parents get involved, sign your kid up. Uh, it's a great program. It helped shape who I am today. It helped shape uh, me as a basketball player, as a coach. So get out there, sign them up. Have a great season. Good luck to everybody. Come back for the final segment of today's show. Mike, I did want to touch a little bit more on the NFL. Your Washington Redskins are definitely on fire. The mighty Washington yes. Redskins, although they weren't they that did, mighty this yeah, weekend. I was going to say they but, lost uh, this weekend, didn't so yeah, they? To the Falcons. And uh, it stinks because Adrian Peterson was on like my DraftKings team. He was like, I keyed that guy, and he was terrible. Well, it happens. He's, what, 50 years old, that guy? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. he's pretty close. He's almost your age. He's almost my age. Very good. Very good. Um, no, a uh, little bit more about uh, NFC East, but I mean, that, I don't even know if that's really even like the topic. I mean, NFL, um, Patrick Mahomes has, has really taken off yeah. for the Kansas City Chiefs, but uh, once again, Andy Reid's their coach, so you know they're... They'll, they will flop in the playoffs because, because that, that's what Andy Reid does, but Patrick Mahomes is the real deal. MVP? And, uh, at this point, yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you see anybody else that... that You've still got. I roughly, mean, Brady's. You could all. Yeah. You can name Brady MVP any year. Yeah. You've still got roughly half the year to go. Yeah, but, yeah. but as of right now, oh, without a doubt, it's Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I can't think of anybody else. It's well, maybe Todd Gurley or. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jared Goff of the Los Angeles Rams. It's, it's so weird. This team. They finally lost this last week. But it, is it just me, or does it seem like they're like totally underrated? Nobody talks that much about them, but they're really good. They are really good. Gurley, by the way, has scored more points this year than the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I saw something. And that, that's legit. I, I didn't make that up. That's yeah, true. no, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, P, uh, what is it? Peter, Peterman? Peterson? Yeah, What's Peterman. It? Peterman. I think he's thrown more touchdowns uh, to the opposing team than other teams have thrown completely. You can make the argument statistically he's the worst quarterback of all time. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think he's worse than uh, Johnny Manziel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you could say uh, Johnny Manziel probably not even in the top ten though of worst quarterbacks no? of all time. No, but you think Peterman? He's at the top of the he list. He is definitely at yeah. the top of the list. Terrible, terrible for them. Uh, They're a bad football team too. Maybe he's a little better uh, on a better team. But, 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 I mean, but look, dude, Buffalo's horrible. No, they're bad. They're, they're a bad. They haven't been any team. better when Josh Allen started. They weren't any better when Derek Anderson started. Uh, they, they actually moved the ball a little bit when Anderson started. They moved the ball, and then he got a concussion. And then he got a concussion. Yeah, yeah. so there's that. Anyways, uh, what, what do we got this week on, uh, on well, the sports animals? Well, show? you got Lobo football mm -hmm. on the road at uh, Air Force on Saturday, a 1.30 kickoff. Uh, certainly talking a lot of Lobo football. Uh, basketball season now in full swing, coming off the victory over Cal State Northridge. You got are, are you excited? I mean, because you got the show today, and everyone's mm -hmm. going to be calling. I think you're going to get some calls. I know we're running out of time, but I just went – you ready to field those calls about how it was a bad win? Yeah, that's fine. Look, a win's a win. Just enjoy it. Take the dub it, and enjoy it. It's it. okay to enjoy a win. Craig Neal won some really great, had some beautiful losses, right? I don't, I'm not comfortable talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, we want to thank Adam Deal, Michael Frankel, for Michael Carlisle and Alden's Leroy Lucero. We'll see you next week on Red Menace TV. God bless you all.